So the goal of this lecture is to use a domain model to store our data instead of plain old objects. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know why domain models are better for storing application state and how to structure our application to use a domain model. So what are domain models? A good practice when writing Angular code is to try to isolate the data structures you are using from the component code. Right now, our data structure is just an array of objects which we initialized on the component, like so. We also have this toggle function which doesn't do anything other than modify a property of the object that's passed in, of this joke object, i.e. the function, the toggle function could exist outside of the component completely and still do its job just fine. Imagine if this was a much larger application, if all the data was stored inside different components as plain objects, it would be really hard for a new developer to find out where the data is stored and which function to edit to elicit the behavior that they want. So to solve this, let's create a class that represents a single joke and attach the toggle function to that class. This class is what we call a domain model. It's just a plain class which we will use to store data and functions. So we will create a simple class with three properties, a constructor and a toggle function. I'm going to call the class joke and now I'll add the three properties setup, punchline and hide. So setup and punchline are both strings and the hide property is a boolean. And as well as the constructor function, I'm going to add a toggle function. All that the toggle function does is it flips the Boolean value of hide from true to false to true to false. As we've mentioned before, we can instantiate a class by using the new keyword. And when that happens, JavaScript calls the constructor function. And inside the constructor function is where we have code that initializes the properties. However, the constructors we've used so far have not had any arguments. The one for joke class above does have some arguments. It has the setup and the punchline. And it initializes the values of setup and punchline from the arguments passed in through the constructor. So how do we actually pass in arguments? We can pass those arguments in when we instantiate a joke with new, like so. So if I wrote let joke equal new joke, the first argument to joke is the setup that gets passed to the constructor. So let's add the setup. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. Yeah. And as you might guess, the second argument to joke is the second argument to the constructor, which is the punchline. So let me add the punchline in here. Yeah. So new joke calls the constructor of the joke class and then whatever we pass as arguments to that is what gets passed as arguments to the constructor. So a quick note on this special this keyword. This points to the instance that we're creating. So when we've created let joke is equal to new joke, this points to the actual joke instance that we're creating. And we use this.setup to distinguish between properties on our class, so this.setup points to the actual setup property, versus arguments that are passed in through function parameters, through function arguments. So now let's change our joke list component, this one here, so it uses domain models instead of objects. So what I'm going to do is new joke. I'm going to pass in this one, and then the punchline. I don't need to set hide because that's set 
by default when we create in the joke constructor. Then let's add the others. So now we've converted our jokes array to now contain instances of the joke class. So now that the jokes array contains instances of a joke class, we then also change the type of the jokes array to be an array of jokes. So a class is also a type. And the final thing we need to do is if you look at the button here, the button is actually calling the toggle function, the toggle function on our joke list component, we now need to call the toggle function on the individual joke instance. In fact, what we need to do is call joke.toggle. And we then also don't need our toggle function on our joke list component. So now when we run our application, everything should work as before. The only difference being that we are now using a domain model instead of plain old objects. So in summary, although it's possible to store all of your data as objects, it's both recommended and simple to encapsulate your data into domain models in Angular. Using a domain model clarifies for all developers where you should put functions that need to act on that data. For example, our toggle function. Our toggle function makes sense on the joke domain model because it acts on the hide property. Next up, we'll look into nesting components together. So having components that have child components that have child components.